guys, welcome back to another episode. And today, we are starting on the front end rebuild. So, as you can see here, we've got a new bull bar. Uh, this is from a guy on Instagram or Facebook known as Jimmy Built. He, he's uh, been doing a few custom bull bars now and uh, saw him a few months ago and really liked the style of it. It was quite cheap. And yeah, finally it's here, uh, three months later. So, what we've got to do now is we've got to strip off pretty much everything on the front end. So aerial, bull bar, headlights are gonna come out and pretty much rip off the whole front end. And then we've got new lights, winch, the bull bar, um, and then get everything back mounted up. So stay tuned. Hey guys, so last night was getting a bit dark and late, but what we managed to do is get the headlights out. So there's a couple on top, a uh, couple on the bottom, and a couple on each side. Um, so we got all them out. Indicators pretty much, there's one screw holding them in and then they pop out. So, got both sides out now. And um, another little issue we had was uh, the antenna. I uh, managed to get an adjustable shifter in there and get the bolt out, but um, seeming though that this doesn't have a slit on the back, I've either got to pull the whole cable out, which is a real pain because my UHF is mounted up in the uh, roof console. So what I'm thinking of doing um, to save me doing that, and I think they should come with a plug on there, but I'm going to get the grinder and just grind a little slit on the back of there, which then I'll be able to get the cable out of. Because if you look at my new bull bar, they actually come slotted. And that way you don't have to do that. So I think that will be much easier than running the cable out and then back up. Um, and then I've got to just take the grill out and then the bull bar is pretty much ready to come off. So, yeah. So we've uh, test fitted the bull bar. So we've got two bolts on the side mounts for the bull bar. Um, we're still waiting on the bracket for the top mount, but pretty much it allows to get both top mounts uh, in here. You see there's two slots and then two holes there. So we're able to get that. So we'll have four bolts holding it on each, on each side. And um, we'll have to play with the heights a little bit because the holes are slotted, but pretty much on this side, I reckon we've got it pretty nice. Um, maybe five mil below that flare and guard line but yeah I think it's looking real tough I'm um, keen to get the front back together and the winch in and that way we'll get a bit more of an indication on how how the gap will be in here but um yeah stoked with it so far all right guys so we have gone for a custom headlight for the front end of the patrol and what we've gone with is Aurora Customs uh, fully custom headlight kit for uh, series 3 patrol now I went with one of them rather than the retro fit because I pretty much needed a new headlight casing anyway. Um, one of my headlights and the other side indicator were both um, letting water in and uh, getting a bit dewy. So I thought I'd just get a whole new kit done and um, yeah, Aurora Customs hooked us up. Now what we've got is um, fully blacked out uh, switchback, uh, I think they call it the Hawkeye. And um, we've also got a bit of custom etching on there for the Bundaberg rum there. So I've got that because, yeah, I love uh, Bundy rum and I uh, thought it'd be pretty cool. So we'll be installing them. Uh, I've got to read the instructions on all the wiring and how to get all the um, lights working with the app and etc. So I'll get them installed and do that. Uh, we've also got our wiring and all our modules in here. And then we've also got um, the indicators. They've been blacked out and also 
look quite nice. So I'll get them installed and um, show you how we go. All right guys, so we've um, just got a couple of screws in holding the first headlight in, but I um, reckon it's looking pretty smick. So I've got the indicator here. So I'm just gonna plug this in. Alright guys, so for the winch, uh, we went with a Runva 12, 11 XP, sorry, and um, went with that basically because it's kind of the middle of the range. I uh, didn't want to go like Kings or something real cheap, um, like a Ridge Rider one or something, but I also didn't want to spend like 1200 1300 So I got this one special from Repco for 828 bucks. so I think that's pretty good. And um, Heard good things about them and heaps of people use them. So we've got a little bag there, a couple of instructions, um, it's all kind of random stuff. And then we've got the winch down here. So it's got the grey cable, uh, which will look quite nice. So I'll have a look at that now, see how it's going to mount up, and um, yeah, try to get it mounted. Hey guys, so we've got the bull bar roughly mounted up now, and along with the headlights. Still got to wire it all up and make the final touches, but we're just looking at putting the winch in now. So we've got it sat in there, uh, four bolts on the front holding it in for now. And we're just looking at where the control box is going to sit. I believe we can use this bracket here, at the back here, and it will mount just at the back there. So I'm going to take these bolts out, have a play around with that, where that's going to sit, and um, yeah, put the grill on and see how it all fits up. All right, so we're mounting the control box up and pretty much you get this bracket for it and it mounts to these like two rails here. So you take out the two bolts that were already in there and you get two longer ones. You put a spacer in and then it will butt up like that. Now you've got to put these on and I just put one bolt in so then I can get better access to them and then uh, tighten this one up once you're done with that and probably also put your cables on here um, before you do all that up tightly. Hey guys, so we're just uh, mounting the grill back up now after mounting the winch and everything up. Um, it's a very tight fit. If you can see down here, the front grill here is pretty much touching on the control box, which not the best, but there's not much we can really do unless I trim one down or move it somehow. Um, but yeah, we've kind of got it all back together. So do these last few screws and bolts up and uh, we'll have a look at it. did was I um, thought these were the three plugs here and that the earth ran to the control box and from there but there's actually a cable on the bottom but in this case the front um, where the earth needs to connect and I couldn't get my hands and um, a tool in there to tighten or loosen that so I actually had to take the winch kind of out put the earth on uh, put another little earth on from the control box and wire that up properly 
So now what we've got is all the cables um, are plugged onto the winch motor. The control box is all hooked up and we've got the isolator switch in here with our little key. So I've just mounted it here on a factory hole next to the battery. Um, pretty much because they only give you a 30 centimetre cable. So it's got to be somewhere around here. Um, I do want to really tidy this up, but for the moment, it's all right. And um, yeah, got the uh, main power running from the isolator to battery and the earth runs down behind the headlights into the winch. So yeah, put the key in to turn it on um, when you're running it. But uh, we'll give it a test go now and see if it works. Just to show you how the winch works, uh, most of you probably know, but you want to engage from the back here um, when you're wanting to use the winch. Um, but to spool it out, just disengage it down there, and that way you've got kind of free spool. You can pull it out, um, and then when you're wanting to use it, so let's just say we're going to winch off the bull bar here, engage it. We've got our Runver wireless remote here. And then just pretty much hook it in. And it works pretty well. And you can also do that on and out as well. So, but yeah, works well. I'm keen to test it under a bit of load. So we're starting to wire up and uh, connect the headlights now. So obviously I got the kind of um, pretty much pretty wide kit. It's pretty much plug and play from here. So there's a, I don't know what you want to call it, but like the main power control box here, which obviously powers the new headlights. And that pretty much plugs, uh, one goes into the factory loom and another power lead comes out and plugs into the control box um, and then back into the headlight. So for that, it's all plug and play. You should have find somewhere to mount that. I just used a factory hole here and just mounted it there. Um, the other side I found another spot and just zip tied it off over there because I didn't really want to drill holes um, and now we just got to look at uh, getting the colors so pretty much we've got the LED light working and the indicators all plugged in it's now just the uh, kind of the under eye and also the colors in the main headlight so there's two different modules for them uh, they plug and play from the headlight back but then you've got a tap them into your indicators, tap them into your um, 12 volt accessory and also ground. All right, so I'm gonna plug the first module in. So there's a thing on this side. And then you get an extension to go to the other side. I'll run that and then um, plug it into positive and negative. Modules plugged in. Um, I've just got one side on the obviously negative and positive, but uh, you can see now that the colours are changing. So just to test that it's working, but a um, bit of wired up probably now. All right, guys. So for one of the modules for the headlights, I need to tap into a ignition or a accessory um, point. Now most of them are in the uh, inside the cab but there's one on the wiper motor here. So I'm just gonna uh, connect into that and solder that up uh, so I can do that a bit easier than running a cable into the cab. And yeah, I'll do that now. So I've 90% installed the Aurora Custom Headlights. Um, now I got the uh, pre-done ones uh, as mentioned earlier, but there's still a lot of wiring to do with it. So unless you've got a bit of kind of wiring skill um, and electrical knowledge, I wouldn't tack it, tackle it yourself. But uh, it also is fairly easy if you do want to give it a crack and uh, be confident in that. But pretty much, um, 
I struggled a little bit to find out where to run everything. Um, it is all labelled, so for example, there's one module for the under eye light and one for the uh, centre itself, in terms of the RGB anyway. So one module is fairly easy, it's just got a path light positive and a ground. So fairly straightforward, you just got to find a path light which, for instance, I'm using my um, old ones off my bull bar plug that went to these. Um, so I've plugged into that and then the ground. And for the other module, a bit more um, work has to go into it because you've also got to get an indicator for that bottom uh, path. So you've got to get an indicator on each side. You've got to get a path light. You've got to get a ground and you've also got to get a 12 volt accessory or ignition. So that's why I tapped into the uh, wiper motor up here to get that. And then again, path light, both indicators and a ground. So there's a lot of cable and it's very small cable so it looks very messy, but I've managed to get um, this black sheath. I've got a bit on the floor here and I got this just from Bunnings um, and it worked really well to just tidy it all up. All the small cables fit in there really nicely and that way you've just got really one cable running to each side and also in between um, and it looks a lot better than like your black, your yellow, your white, your red, all of that. So. That's what I've done for there. Um, so I'll show you kind of how they work and yeah. Hey guys, so as you can see, I've got the car on the ignition and the bottom light is showing. So I've got an app here, which you download from the QR code on the module. And you can do any like RGB color. You can do one in between. You've also got different modes. So colorful scroll to the left. Um, something like that and yeah you can play around with all the different settings on there now what I'll do is I'll turn the path light on so now you can see uh, that the red light is on and I can also turn on that bottom light and then finally you've got the headlights so obviously you'll see there's a bit of a pinky color because they were red and then white but if you go onto the other app, um, you can change them to just the white and that way it looks kind of factory. Um, and you can also do that for the other one too. So you put that on white and that way it doesn't look uh, too noticeable and stand out too much. But uh, yeah, pretty cool bit of kit.